Good Midwest morning, everyone. This is Nicole, your mobile blog is for TOCtown.com. Well, I hope you're doing much better in the latter half of 2020 than in the beginning. <laughs> we are just passing uh, COVID-19, finally reducing the percentages of infection, but we are still not out of the woods. So I hope you are staying hydrated and just reinforcing your immune system with a lot of fresh vegetables as well as fruits. I do have my hydrated for the holiday tea recipe right here next to me. So if you see, hear me for a second, take a sip, then excuse me as I make sure my throat is not scratchy while I'm doing my podcast. By the way, if you want a copy of the recipe, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash T-O-C town and download the recipe for a mere $10, which supports our corporate community and culture and the podcast that we produce here in T-O-C town.com. Okay, let's dive into the meat of the matter for the day. To start off, I wanted to go ahead and do a planner tag for my second episode of 2020. And in that episode, I wanted to revisit a lot of the planner supplies and stationary things that I liked, I disliked, or just <laughs> decided to change out for the new season and time. I do have a new five-year journal post ready for you in the link below if you're looking to journal your journey or just simply start writing pen to paper and taking those thoughts out of your head and leaving them on the page only for you to come back and review and to change challenge or leave it the same okay this is an extended version of the first planner tag, which I mentioned, I think I did in 2016. So I haven't looked at the video yet. So I'm pretty sure I remember most of my answers and some of them have changed, but I want to see and compare 2016 leap year answers with 2020 leap year. And of course, if you want to watch the video, I will link that down below as well. Okay, question number one, what planner are you using? Currently, I'm using the Mambi planner, which is me and my big ideas, along with my day designer mini a daily. So both of them are being used on a day-to-day -day basis and pretty much planning out my social media content as well as my in-studio schedule. And in addition to that, I'm also getting ready for 2021 by just noting what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and implementing those things in my planners for 2021. Number two, what planners have given you planner peace? And once again, I don't have planner peace in <laughs> paper and pen. I have peace through Christ and my surrendered life through the word that he ministered over 2,000 years ago that he rose again. So more about that later in another podcast. Number three, follow facts, Midori or Aaron Condren? Well, as of lately, Aaron Condren, definitely not. And I'll share with you the challenges that I faced in just trying to upcycle the copy that I did decide to purchase. Midori, mm, I love the standard size, you know, in ATN, but I'm also starting to use the Filofax pocket for my evergreen content that I'm producing on my live and local stations. So if I had to pick one between the three of them, it would definitely be a standard size Midori. Number four, pocket, personal, A5, or binder. I would say binder because it allows me to move, you know, left to right and reposition papers as well as notes, not necessarily dates, but 
it allows me a lot more flexibility than the pocket personal or a5 okay number five where do you get inspired the most youtube instagram or pinterest i would have to still say youtube because it is a visual platform and also you know just as far as memory planning is concerned it just serves as a great basis for just documenting what i've already done as well as seeing some of the other planners what they're using and what i might be interested in in purchasing for future years of planning what's your go-to pen it's the pilot g2 but it's no longer the regular i think 0.7 i think i went up to a one so and i like that and include the bold um ink on there i do have a few videos on it if you're interested in seeing what kind of difference the ink does on your paper Number seven, what are your favorite inserts? Ooh, that one's a hard one. Okay, my favorite above all would definitely be DIY fish inserts, and that is a direct download, you know, and she operates out of Singapore. But the downside to that is you definitely have to incur the cost of paper and ink, but you can use it in multiple platforms like the rings as i mentioned but you can also use it in the format of a tn so the versatility is great but after a while you can imagine the cost can really escalate when you don't know how to print cut or you know assemble them correctly but there are tutorials she does have a blog so hands down she would be my favorite um insert as of 2020 number eight stickers post-it notes or page flags post-it notes hand down nine keep it simple or deck it out i'm leaning towards the deck it out for 2021 because i'm i kept it simple for so many years i think i just want to go ahead and use the stickers that i've uh, purchased from the Etsy shops as well as the independent um shops in their online services that they just offer you know great illustrations as far as functional planners you know and just looking pretty it's going to look great for 2021. number 10 how many sections do you have well currently in my mambi planner i separated the 18 months into three separate planners so it looked like i you know had a new planner every you know so often so i think i like that format but in my day designer mini all of the 12 months are all together which i really appreciate when i'm looking for you know what where and when did i plan a certain event or a podcast then one spiral binder the binding on the spiral mini is you know what i prefer so that's why for 2021 i'm going to be you know changing it up a bit so that i don't have to transfer from one planner to the next i just want to be in one planner for the entire you know 12 month season number 11 do you use a planner for school no i don't i am going back to instructing in 2021 so that might change but i'll probably use a uh, traveler's notebook as opposed to a planner and use it as a memory planner as opposed to an agenda you know or setting up days times and appointments for my students number 12 rings spiral bound or other and there's a question mark of why okay um like i just i actually just answered that question um rings you know it's just portable you can it's flexibility is just you know great for when you have to change presentations as well as you know when the months turn over from summer to fall winter to spring you don't necessarily have to change the casing casing you just change your inserts whereas spiral bound you gotta you know be committed for whatever the time period is but it's 
good to know like when I'm looking for something, it's right there. Okay, do you use a dashboard? Currently, no, not formally in my uh, planner, but I will be using my EDC, my every, everyday carry more in 2021. So stay tuned for an update on that. Okay, and here is the extended part, which I got from my purpley life, I think it was, but I don't think she's planning online you know, pen to paper anymore, but the questions are still there in case you want to participate in this tag as well. It really helps to formulate what you want to start planning in as far as just using pen to paper, but as well as even if you just want to journal your journey. Okay, the first question is the same. How many planners do you have or own? Well, I've been at this now for almost 10 years and I could say I have almost maybe over 20 to 25 planners. I got to count that and get back to you. How many planners do you use at one time? As I mentioned before, I just use two planners, but I use two TNs at the same time. Not every day, but from time to time, I do update each platform. Number three, when do you start when did you start using a paper planner well i mentioned uh, before that i started using in college i had to take a summer program you know for in order to proceed to my freshman year but just by starting this channel i felt like i needed a separate pen to paper planner so i can map out you know the when the what the how the Am I going to upload, edit, you know, and also revise my future uh, strategies? Number four, when did you start decorating your planner? As soon as the Etsy shop started opening. So that had to be around 2013, 2014, I think. Um, if you could use only one embellishment to decorate your planner, what would you use? highlighters because then I can read my notes and know which section was dedicated to what title and what topic. Ooh, what is your favorite pen to write with? I would say a Pilot G2 but actually I like using a ballpoint pen better than that because the fluidity it won't smudge, it won't bleed, it won't shadow onto the next page. So pretty much a classy ballpoint pen will do me just fine. Favorite place to shop for your planner goodies can also be your favorite Etsy seller. I would say, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name right now, but um, not just DIY fish. But I have um, so much crafting as well as scripts by LNC. And there's one more. And of course, I'll just link all of the shops below the ones that did survive COVID 19 and have reopened for the fall season into 2021. And I just encourage you to support them as they are businesses that affect families. Okay, number eight, what is the most you have spent on at a store for a planner supplies? I would say Speckled Fawn for their TN covers. They are handmade, <laughs> just really excellent pieces of art and work, and I really um, treasure the pieces that I purchased from them. What is your planning routine? I really don't have a planning routine, but for 2021, I want to start either just planning, mapping out my day in the morning or summarizing what I was able to accomplish in the evening. So either I'll have a first thing in the morning or before I settle in for the evening. If you had, number 10, if you had to pick only one planner, which one would you use and why? I would say I would settle down into a day designer, the 7x9 one flagship daily 
because literally I write a lot and I love writing. So it's nothing for me to write down a thought, an idea, uh, a must have, and even what I'm looking to, you know, purchase even for the next leap year. It'll be here before you know it. All right, number 11, show us your washi tape stash. Is it out of control? Well, <laughs> on this podcast, I can't show it to you, but no, it's not out of control because I still have the original, I think I have maybe, I'll go ahead and say 30 rolls, but that's an over-exaggeration. But I want to add more that have, you know, the environment or, you know, plants and you know, just things that are natural to the Midwest and my surroundings so I can add those to my memory planning as well as my um, just calendars. Number 12. It's a bonus question I have here. <laughs> Best part of pen to paper plans for 2020. I think the best part that I like or really appreciate about just being able to write, number one, it's a skill that um, I've treasured all of my life and I'm still able to do it. And just having my thoughts written whenever I go back to review my notes, sometimes I'm surprised at some of the things that I've written and it's a nice surprise. Um, they're gentle reminders of where we've been, what we as a planner community have experienced the good, bad, and the seriously ugly. You know, it allows me to see the goals that I've achieved because mentally I can say, yeah, <laughs> I did a lot between 2010 and 2020. You know, it's been a long road. And a lot of the things that I had to learn, I had to learn by myself, you know, researching it, curating the content, um, pretty much testing a lot of items, sampling some companies and being disappointed in what they had to produce and offer. And having had paid for it, you know, was seriously disappointed that even in the reproduction of whatever item that they produced, the quality wasn't necessarily better the second time around. Then I can focus on, you know, what challenges are awaiting me, you know, so binging and watching other YouTubers, you know, share with you what they like about their planner routine, their TNs, as well as, you know, their studio environment that they're able to create based on what they've planned out, it's really, you know, good inspiration because you see a lot of things that you would not have necessarily thought about, especially just doing a planner tag. It never existed before 2013. You know, so if you feel like you want to go ahead and answer these 25 questions, you know, for yourself and see, not compare to other planners, but as far as your journey, your strengths, your weaknesses, your challenges are concerned, you know, where can you improve to have a more peaceful understanding of your purpose in life, you know? And this is the final minute where I'm going to start wrapping up this second episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this journey. I hope you had time to actually grab something to drink and to Meditate on my answers as well as the questions. If you do decide to participate, please leave me a link down below and I will be sure to comment, a like, <laughs> and maybe even subscribe to your podcast or your social media channel. I'm Nicole. Your mobile blog is for toctown.com. Until we meet online or face-to-face, -face, be blessed.